doctori tutta post so welcome back to another video and the topic for today is process handling on POSIX so I will show you what is this all about but before diving into that I would like to uh, tell you that there is a new discord server that you can join and where you can be discussing anything related to these videos or to say in C++ libraries as well so make sure to check out the link in the description now let's get started so what's the problem we are trying to solve so wh what i was trying to solve i was actually um trying to improve the test suite um on on regard to process handling i was trying to write um and um, modifying one of the asynchronous um tests that are um launching processes and asynchronously waiting for the and the process to be ended and i and i figured out that uh, i'm doing a bunch of wrong things in process handling and um, so the first the first thing that is wrong in process handling is the following on when spawning a process on windows i am even if i know that this process uh, was not created because i don't know you you have been choosing a process that does not exist or or something that does not have the right permissions i'm still returning true because to make this uh, process launch uniform with posix um, i don't have any way in posix of knowing um, when i'm launching a process if that process actually succeeded i don't have a way to know it until i actually wait for the result why is it that because i'm not spawning the actual process but i'm spawning a shell that is invoking the process so i th this is not really the right way to do it unless you know someone wants to do it for for some specific reason but uh, uh, for sure this cannot be like the default way of launching um, a command because it would be um, it would be hiding if uh, a process actually does not exist on disk because you will know when just this uh, shell command execute will return a value and you cannot do it asynchronously so you will launch like uh, an asynchronous watch in a process that that should not even exist so how can we fix this instead of using um, this function i think we can use exec uh, vp which is the variation where we have um, to specify the file and the number of arguments so i will start to do that and let me before doing that let me show you that this is an actual problem so the, um, the the process error test was doing exactly this was launching like a non-existing process so, so doctori is clearly a, a, pro a process that does not exist and but this this call is is returning true uh, or a truish result and and you know this should not happen this test should be like something like that and but if i try to do that this is not passing because there is no way in which this can be the the POSIX um, process implementation is returning like uh, information about the process not existing. So let's let's try to fix this first and then we'll see if we can even do something more advanced. Um, so the first thing I would like to do or I, I need to do is I need to 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 use this other exec vp function i need to package all of my arguments into um, an array of char a constant array of, of char pointers so something like that so it would be char um const char um r r v with some maximum i don't know command arguments max okay let's define this so i we definitely are fine with supporting a limited you know high but limited amount of um possible commands so let's say this is i don't know 256 um yeah let's make it like this 
and I would like to save all of the commands into into a command like into this string so right now this string is just being concatenated yeah from the from the you know the list of parameters pa that is being passed that contains the um, executable and all of the arguments so this is fine on windows for how the api works so if s C windows uh, sorry SC platform windows but on POSIX we need to do it differently um, how can we do it I would do the following um, I can still be looping all of the arguments I need to know which is the current argument and I want to be accumulating all of these arguments so I can do a pen null terminated with the current uh, string but I, the append null terminated, it's popping the null terminator if it exists. So I don't want this to happen. I want like this to be optional. So I will be adding a parameter that I can call, uh, I don't know, pop um, existing null terminator. I mean, all of these names can be improved and I will improve before committing, but uh, let's say if true will pop existing null terminator, oh, let's say, well, it, it's clear that it's true. Pops existing null termina terminator if it exists. Um, yeah, bull pop, existing null terminator uh, if pop this thing then we will pop the null terminator so what we can do now is we can accumulate all of the so the idea is we accumulate all of the string views into a single string but keeping their null terminator such that we can just save the offsets and we have a single allocation and we can spot the process using um, the single this single string by just pointing the pointers to to the beginning of each um, section of the string. So I will append null terminated and say false. Actually, we probably need to make this a default parameter so that the existing behavior is preserved. But here we want to do false, which means uh, do not pop existing null terminator. Now, um, I would like to save the, um, so I need to save the current size in bytes. Um, can I use this? Okay. Including terminator. I want to save this into, um, I think we can use a C array. Why not? Um, command arguments, um, sides in bytes. And we need to save the number of arguments. Command arguments uh, number. So commands ar arguments number is just params size in elements. Commands uh, arguments number idx is this thing. So we save the index of basically the offsets that need to be added on top of command data to arrive to our the beginning of our string. And I can, I just need to, I think, increment IDX. 
um, size in elements. Um, yeah, this is the right name. This is a music variable that needs to go here. Okay, now we need to fix this thing here. Um, so I can do this for size the IDX equals zero till the command arguments number. And I can write the arg V IDX to be what? Let's say constructor base of string of arguments to be command dot view dot uh, uh, bytes. What's the name? Bytes including terminator. And we add the offsets that we have been saving. Um, offsets what was the name command arguments size in bytes idx will this work probably not but we can try actually when passing the arg v we need to the first argument needs to be the full path to the executable so if this is not a full path yeah we we'll probably need to adjust it but for now this will, will be good enough um, no matching function oh so this is not yeah that the, when you use this kind of C-level function, uh, there is never, you know, proper const correctness. So, so we have to do a count. This is one of the few cases where you can do some sort of const cast. And we can make it char, uh, something like that, I guess. Okay. Well, I don't think this will work, but let's see. Oh, we actually got both the executable name and the first argument properly. I think in the, um, yeah, I've been reading the documentation of this function before starting the video. And I think you also have to terminate the argv list with a null PTR. So, Mm. yeah this should be fine okay let's try to see if this is even working now still failing so what's failing um are we even arriving here? Yeah. We cannot breakpoint, put a breakpoint here because this pawn lambda is pawned after the fork and it, this is actually executed in the child. So, oh, we are, oh, so the exec is being executed. Okay, so this is good because means yeah, exec is failing. We know, as let's say, we know exec is failing. Okay, at least now we know that exec is failing differently from earlier. The problem is that we know this into the child process, we don't know it into the parent process that is spawning this. Um, this child process so we need to report this information up into the parent how can we do that the way to do it is to use um, pipe 
which is something we can use for inter process communication. Um, I want to get rid of this spawn with the lambda thing because it's completely useless. So let's just copy it here and our lambda becomes, well, let's keep also this BNSH because I guess in some cases we may want to use this syntax so we can make it an option. Um, yeah. So is this even succeeding? Okay, let's see if we can still, yeah, exec is failing. Um, okay. So let's create the pipe. The pipe is just pipe descriptor parent pipe parent pipe create pipe um, so we want this pipe to be closed when if the exec succeeds so this is typically how you want every file to be like a with you know with very few exceptions you want um, files and pipes to always be closed when you know not when when a um, exec will succeed because this allows you not to um, to to keep the process the child process hanging. So this inheritable read flag or write flag is exactly controlling the O clo exec um, flag on POSIX. So we can make it in um, pipe descriptor inheritable read um, read non inheritable and also the write non inheritable. Um, so this will be visible in the fork, but if this succeed, they will be it will be immediately closed because it's non inheritable. Now, well, let me place a comment. Non inheritable equals or cloexec. Okay. Um, so, what I would like to do is to write the Erno into the right pipe so parent pipe dot write pipe dot write span oh this is a span of char right so i don't like this interface i think i need to change it i don't want to be doing a r interpret cast to write just an integer yeah so i think it's it's good idea to write back the R no. Um, yeah, we'll write back the R no. And this is how we are going to do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this. I need to add some other overload here such such that you don't you will not need to yeah so you can write you know simple types like uh, integer without doing the interpret cast yes let's put a to do to do add um uh right overload that will let's say right or span overload that will not need to be called with a reinterpret cast. Um, I think I need to close the right pipe because that will send the end of file signal. And on the other side, I want the parent pipe. For, for sure, I need to close the right pipe also here because otherwise the child process cannot terminate and on so here we are on the parent process 
define process branch and this is child process branch again after fork that the process will be duplicated and will continue from here the child process will continue this code path and the parent process will continue this other code path so i'm going to be reading um some data and result um so well i need to do the same thing also here um yeah i don't really like this interface mainly this this reinterpret cast thing but we yeah we can fix it another day definitely all of these calls can fail but well we cannot do much more than ignoring the fails on on the child process so here i can decide if actually read sides in bytes is not zero then we got some error no and we can return result uh, error child process failed to execute does it sound right let's try yeah Oh, no. now hopefully it works also in the cases where this is not happening okay so um, output oh yeah of course i'm injecting some output in the child process which is not supposed to be here um yeah okay all succeeded so this is working this is now working and this means that i can align also so now right now the windows um the windows code will be failing because it still has the old behavior that is is enforced by this line here where we are just saying hey yeah this succeeded because we didn't know how to do this on POSIX now we know how to do it on POSIX, so now this fails, but we can change it. So this is in process windows.enl. This guy here. Where is it? Here we are. Okay, well, this, yeah, of course, this is failing. We knew that, but we can now say create process actually failed. And this is to be removed. Will it, will it work? Yes. Okay, cool. So now we unified both the Windows and the POSIX behavior with something that makes more sense because now when a process fails, if you try to launch the Doctori process, which I guess we should create at some point, this will now fail properly. Um, and this is extremely exciting. So what else can we be adding to this video? This video is now 24 minutes long and um, as far as I, I, I would be happy closing it here, but I, I will try, I mean, you can stop it here if you, are, if you have enough of process handling, but if you wanna go deeper, I've prepared another subtopic that I wasn't sure if I would have been able to, um, you know, to go into the video, but yeah we can try so i i have been 
reading a little bit about um, process handling more in detail because I said, okay, this process um, spawning is not really right. Let me, let me learn how this is meant to be done. And I've learned that on POSIX, a child process that is being forked will inherit the um, signal handlers. So signal handlers are, you know, this crazy uh, POSIX thing that you can customize, you can enable, disable them, and you can customize with callbacks that get called when uh, one of the signals is being raised. And, and typically the average um, signal handler is not ready to, um, to be executed in, in some child process. So I think uh, what, what everyone is suggesting is to uh, basically, let's say, disable this kind of inheritance for child process when executing uh, a child process, when, when trying to launch, launch a, a child process. But how can we do that? Um, we need to use this p-thread sig mask and block all the signals before forking uh, with a default signal set, which means like a, um, uh, we, we want to be blocking all of the, you know, the default signals. Then we can, uh, actually we need to remove some signals that may um, be useful because if you block them and something happens before the exec is um, actually executed, that will um, can lead to some sort of hang um, of the process. So I don't know if I will be doing that, but for sure we need to block all of of the signals. I think this is a very, very rare um, type of scenario because the amount of time that is passing between fork and when you are actually doing the exact, which is kind of here, is really, you know, so, so small that I don't think the, the probability of some of this process of these um, signals happening is very low, but it's technically possible. So, so after the fork in the parent, we can just restore the mask that was initially done. And in the child, we have to reset all of the signal handlers to be uh, the default signal handlers. And we need to unblock the signals, which means putting an empty set and setting it to a sig mask because this will, will unset all of the um, signal block flags for, for all of that signals. Um, Shall we try to do that? Yeah, we can try. I don't know if I'll be able to make this actually working. Actually, I don't even have, now that I think I don't have a way to control signals, so I don't even have a way to test this. But if, you know, I will do it at this code anyway, eventually add a test later. Let's stop the, this virtual machine because it's just wasting CPU time unnecessarily. Um, actually, I can suspend it. Yeah, suspend. Now, um, process. So, process POSIX. So, I want to be creating a default signal set. Um, I think I need to include signal, include signal, of course, for signal, sig set type of things. I can't remember exactly the name of the API. I should have been writing it when I was looking it up. So it was like sig, uh, the other one was for sure p -thread sig sig mask. Um, we have a sig set t um, new sig set and sig fill yeah sig fill set new sig set so this is filling with default signal mask now this API we can check it, but this is uh, this is taking um, sig set sig set mask. So we want to be setting this mask. It's asking us, okay, which sig mask do you want me to set? 
actually we want a sig lock i think yeah and, and in the last parameter we can back up let's say old sig set so we can back up the current sig set because what we later want to be doing is restoring it here so say and this is where i will do sig set mask with the old sig set and an old ptr here um okay this is already sounding reasonable let's see if you know our test suite just runs Test suite is running. I think there is a sig del set. So from this default sig set, we want to be removing some of these um, signals. So the abort signal, because otherwise we will not be able to receive it. We want to be removing for sure sig kill the sig ill which is the illegal instruction sig i think trap which is the signal you get when you listen to you know metal trap music which i like no i'm joking but it's it's another signal we need to keep enabled i will add just a stop and it's fine i think we can probably add some more but i think th this should be enough to avoid let's say um avoid um hanging of child process now um after forking we want to be restoring Um, signals to default because signal handlers because the child process has inherited any potential custom signal handler because we block them but their callbacks are still here so what we need to do I think it's uh, sig action yeah uh, my sig um my sig let's say make it uh, mem set e my sig zero size of my sig my sig dot uh, i don't remember this one if it's um is it the flags because then there is sig action function. So I need to make struct sig action. Sig action. Was it a function or was it? Yeah, it's both the name of the function and the name of the struct. Um, yeah. Or we can simply do signal. Mm, I don't remember this API. I need to look it up again. Sig action. So sig action. Yeah, this one we need. We want to set it back to default. So this needs to be the sig is a handler. S A um hmm. is there any example here? So Well, this one for sure, we don't want to be specifying it. 
So in SA flags, we need to put the SA handler. On some architecture, a new is well, do not assign both SA handler and SA sig action. Okay. But we, we don't have it. So this is my sig. Is it just like a Mac OS thing? Oh, there is a SIG action. Hmm. Oh, it's through a define. Oh, that's why it was not, the uh, auto completion was not working right. Okay. I think this is this is correct. So we're gonna be looping for in the or to from zero to n signals. Not sure if this is standardized, but yeah. For sure, if signal is, I think the stop. There are some signals you cannot change, but we'll see. I think the either the kill or the stop, but you can put the signal back. My sig, sorry, no idx my signal no so it's not the sig action it's the handler sorry okay and why is this not yeah because we need to take the address of this i think this can be good I can make it better probably now the other thing I need to do is to unblock the signals because we still have all of the signals blocked from here so I want to create like a sig empty set uh, new set well we can reuse the new sig set and I want to be putting ptread sig mask sig set mask for the new sig set. No. So this should be unblock unblocking the signals because we will do a set mask on an empty set clearing all of the blocked signals. Well, this is working, so hopefully this is not wrong. I don't really have any way of attaching signals in the framework to a process, so um, this would really need some sort of test to make sure that this is done right don't even know how to do that should we try to create a signal then create launching an executable that is launching that signal and checking that is not received in the parent yeah that's what we should be doing um also this 127 it's not right there was it like exit fail well no, there was an exit failure, I think. Um, we'll keep the one in 27. 
Um, well, this can be also just minus one. I think this is fine. Let's just make sure that the entire suite now is running. Well, all of the process related tests are always being run. Well, also the plugin is, is using sub -pro child process. So if that works, it's also a good sign. Um, before saying that this is all cool, we probably need to check if this is still working on Linux. So I will, um, yeah, I could just uh, process um, work in progress. Um, yeah, add signal handling. Well, I would rename this commit, but uh, just for now, add signal handling and not use uh, bin sh to phone children. So I am pushing such that I can pull it into the VM. Let's pull. Okay. Build it. Let's run it. Um, opening SC test. Well, this is good. Tests are running. We can run them again. Okay, so at least with the signal handling stuff, even if, as you can see, I'm not 100% sure of what I'm doing, but you know, this happens all the time, so don't, don't be scared. I, I like to do things incrementally, so even if I don't fully understand everything, it's, it's all right. I think we were doing, you know, we were not, even disabling any signal, and this is clearly wrong. So by just blocking them, we are avoiding problems that can happen. And we reset them to the default signal, so it, this can't be hurting in any way. Um, and also here in the parent process, we are restoring everything. So I think that this should be good. Maybe I will either it a little bit more and clean it up before committing, but I think this should be should be good. That being said, I think it's all for today. I'm hopefully well. That is a short video for my standards, so I guess this is um, this is uh, something I'm getting better at doing this. Hopefully, uh, this will continue. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if I did something wrong, which I could have totally been doing, especially on this signal stuff that I do not fully grasp. Let me know in the comments or let me know in, um, in the Discord that is linked below. And what, what else can I say? Make sure to subscribe and download C++, Saint C++ libraries and try it out yourself with the latest commits if this works on your machine and let me know if it doesn't. Um, so see you next time, have fun and don't forget to do funny things and have fun. Bye.